the whole Web3 concept, I think, made it possible for a lot of new new artists to come in and, and make a living as an artist and even traditional artists, especially the ones that got in about 2018. <laughs> Hi, New Farm community. We're always excited to bring you awesome guests on our podcast. We're powered by Newcoin Foundation, focused on fostering the expansion of decentralized social applications, also known as Social 3.0, by forming an ecosystem and a community of visionaries, creators, and investors to spark conversations on the topics of crypto, the metaverse, NFT, and everything Web3. And on today's episode of New Forum, we are super excited to have with us Bart Ayerson, an NFT crypto artist who has been involved within the space since 2018. We're going to talk with Bart about the crypto culture, using art to communicate human issues, custom smart contracts, and how NFTs can transform an artist's life. Hey, Bart, we're super happy to have you on today. Yes, great. Thanks for having me. Great to see you. So uh, why don't we get started right now with how did you got your first NFT published and how did you got involved in the crypto community? It started when I was researching. I was trying to do a, an installation artwork that had a, a form of micropayments. I wanted something that people could interact with. Um, and that started me researching. It led me right to cryptocurrency uh, uh, Steam, Steam it was the first one I ran across, Steam it, which became Hive. So I kind of started there and then uh, started exploring art on the blockchain and uh, how to make that possible and ran across a, a blog post by uh, Jason Bailey of Art Gnome. And he was, uh, the article was about uh, NFTs and how people are selling art on, on the blockchain and that the uh, super rare needed more artists that were trying to recruit artists to the platform. So I um, studied the art there, learned about Robbie Barat, and um, then I used, uh, I was interested in artificial intelligence art. So about the same time I started investigating AI art and uh, using something that Robbie Barat wrote, uh, well, forked uh, a code repository uh, called Art DC GAN. Anyway, I uh, trained that on my oscilloscope artwork. Previous to putting NFTs out, I was uh, creating uh, art with oscilloscopes using sound. So I took all the images of my oscilloscope art and put them into an AI model and trained that and um, applied to Super Rare, showing them. I wrote a blog post about my art and how I made it and applied to Super Rare. And then I was accepted in 2018 in November and started to um, put my first artwork out in November 2018. That's that's quite amazing. So you've been uh, a traditional artist before and kind of switched into the Web3 space or how did that change your your way of making art? Uh, well, I was, I guess, an aspiring artist before that. I uh, I became deeply interested in uh, the art of non, non June Paik after seeing a, a sculpture of his at a resort um kind of a robot it was made out of tvs it had a it looked like a face um made out of tvs with his video art running on it but i started studying art and how i it kind of inspired me to make art because i'm not a painter or a draw a person who can draw but i like technology and the ability i could make videos and make things out of old pieces of technology like oscilloscopes so that started me down the path of exploring how to make art with technology and how to uh, how to kind of fuse code i'm a, a software a coder by trade so i took the the art and i'm combining it with code the perfect moment in time happened when i saw the article by art gnome by jason because i, I art and this new technology came out that enabled me to, to deploy, it, deploy it to the blockchain. Now I'm working on art that uses the blockchain itself. So I'm embedding art into the code itself. I'm very interested in uh, interactive art and, and embedding art into code. Oh, that's interesting. Quite technical stuff, I guess. So 
I'm guessing you're creating your own uh, smart contracts. Are you doing yeah. that yourself? And how is the experience like? Uh, do you work with like other programmers or this is something you do by yourself? And what's like the thought process when you're creating these smart contracts? I'm mainly by myself doing using uh, open source projects to do it like uh, open Zeppelin. So a lot of the hard work's been done. I can just take what uh, an open Zeppelin contract and then uh, uh, make my own mods on it or extend. I can extend their methods and make them do something that I want them to do. Um, so it's a matter of taking what they've built and then uh, adding methods that that uh, create art. Right now, I'm mainly we're working with SVG files. So within the smart contract, it's generating SVG code and then saving that as part of the NFT to the to the blockchain so the image isn't external to the nft like with the ipfs instead of the image being out on ipfs in the url where the image would be is just a big long hex string of the image so it's right inside the contract in the in the nft and permanently stored on the blockchain but it's a lot of experimenting with um rink b just changing the code, deploying it, and testing it, seeing what it looks like on the test net. OpenSea has a test net where you can see the images. Um, so it's just a, a iterative process. Um, and the collections, how do you come up with the collections yourself? Like what is your process with coming up with a collection? The art I'm create have created in the past that isn't really a, inside the smart contract, uh, the super rare art, most of it's generative. It's either AI art or oscilloscope art or some other form of gener generative processes. I don't really have collections per se. I create individual works and release them. So I've never had a real concept of a collection, even though that's the way a lot of things are marketed and sold right now. So it's a little bit difficult in that way because I'm not, I don't have a set collection that kind of organically evolve as I create each piece. But some of the themes, and the problem is I jump between ideas. I make something along one theme and then switch to another theme. And then I go back to the original theme kind of in a, I guess, iterative fashion. But um, my original idea that I had for art was a story called Sage Anomaly. I saw this art coming out of the AI and it looked kind of alien. It was the oscilloscope art that I first made. And so I envisioned it coming from some alien. So I started writing a short story about this alien, which I call the entity. And uh, I study a computer called the Sage computer. It was built in 1955. It's a huge computer it's called Sage, uh, semi-automatic ground environment. It was built for the military, US military to watch for Russian bombers coming over to drop nuclear weapons on the US. So a lot of my art is inspired by war art uh, piece, the, the kind of anti-war, but exploring the Cold War and computers, how computers came out of the Cold War. But in this story, I, uh, I wrote a bit of it and then used the story and took uh, concepts that came out of the story and made new AI models, which generated more images. And then I put those images in the story. So it's uh, a recursive process where the story inspires the art and the art is aspiring more of the story. So more of my collection pieces is one on async art called Sage Anomaly, but it's uh, 303 pieces, but they're generated when you mint them. And it, it has the story inside of it around the border. I put a frame around it that has the story, the words of the story, and then it dynamically layers uh, different combinations of images uh, uh, behind the frame. And I found a bunch of images at the National Archives. I went down there to the National Archives in Maryland and uh, found uh, old archival images of this computer and other computers, huge computer rooms. So I used that in the art as the background. And then I overlay alien elements on top of it that come out of the AI model, like images of, of aliens or uh, just different weird unusual concepts that come out in the story it, it ends up this entity is a time traveler they they uh they're a, a unit of three 
so they they're uh, triune but they come from the far future and they're coming back in time and they travel through computer networks they've come back to warn humanity of of the destruction of the earth in the far future and uh so the the images of the art explored this entity coming back and and uh it, it's a, their attempts to communicate with humans so a lot of the art has things that look like words but don't uh are kind of alien in form because i run them through multiple ai models so the, a lot of the art is inspired by that story some of it's inspired by juxtaposition of ideas so i'll take a a bunch of images of i did one of gas masks i took faces with gas masks combined them with clocks kind of the idea of faces a human face or a clock face and i have a collection i call the the knights of the apocalypse how is the nft like art mar market embracing these interesting concepts because there's like a culture movement already you know that we see when it comes to nft and the nft world so how is it fitting in or you know sort of setting its own i guess uh, trend i'm not really sure originally in 2018 it was uh a little bit more trendy the the ai art uh, people were buying more artificial intelligence style art because it was so new and and interesting to look at and now it's become a little bit more cliche you can tell what gan art is and there's a lot of it on the market i mean this this idea of a pop apocalypse i don't know that it's that popular right now it isn't really selling so um it might be too dark for the times since the times are so dark at the moment but a lot of people that like my that have been buying my art are people that are interested in some of the first people in the space um people that put out art in 2018 2019 a part of it is collecting artists that were at the beginning of crypto art and so i see a lot of people interested in the history and how it's how it all started even though it's only been a couple years since nft art really started interesting and and how do you think um these web3 tools like nfts and um you know, maybe like collector DAOs and nft DAOs, like how can that change an artist's life you know we we know the usual way of um the artists and the collectors and the galleries but how did that whole concept like change through web3 the whole web3 concept i think made it possible for a lot of new new artists to come in and and make a living as an artist and even traditional artists especially the ones that got in about 2018 um because it was for the digital artists there was not very many options for how to make a living off of art uh you had to sell prints or t-shirts or go on patreon and uh, i found it really hard to try to compete in the traditional art space because of the fees you pay to the galleries to be in a competition. For them to curate your art, to be on display in an exhibition, you have to pay a fee. And just paying 50 bucks, 100 bucks for every exhibition you might be in, it just isn't, I don't see this sustainable for the artist. But the NFT market opened up the world to a whole lot of new collectors that had a lot of uh, you know, crypto money that wanted to uh, explore something new and be involved with art. And it was, there wasn't, uh, there wasn't this anxiety of walking into a gallery and having to deal with, you know, someone that knows all about art and this kind of a very experienced in it. It enabled people just to go right to the, the artist and buy something. But the main thing is that it, it provided a platform for digital art that didn't exist before. Uh, video artists have had a hard time selling art since video art was invented uh, just because people didn't appreciate it and it was hard to uh, transport. It had to be on a, a video disc or a VHS tape. Uh, it was just hard to authenticate that you had the one original copy. And this whole new NFT model kind of uh, broke that whole mold. And uh, I like it because it's it presents it as public art. Everybody can see my art and I, I want that to happen, but yet, someone will pay for it and that's um a really nice to have a collector that will pay for something that is effectively public art and i hope it continues and the dao model really 
has helps with that too, because people can pool their money into a DAO and artists can kind of kind of work as a cooperative. I kind of see them as, as a, a modern form of a cooperative, although I haven't been really involved much with DAOs other than the, the super rare DAO Holly plus DAO. They, uh, they took a song that I wrote and it's in on sale on their auction for the Holly plus DAO. That's about the only two artistic DAOs I'm in, DAOs I'm in right now. I want to know what excites you about Web3. What, what really draws you to this, this space? I mean, I, I know that like whenever we speak of Web3, most of the time we're thinking about, thinking about Gen Z and, you know, this like a specific age group. So what is uh, it that, you know, draws you aside, obviously, the monetization aspect of it, the value uh, you can gain for your work? What, what else draws you to it? The other part that draws me to it is just the, I'm more of a, technologists, I tend to jump on the latest trends. Just I'm so involved with technology and computers and programming that this is just kind of an extension of that as far as I, it, it's code and it's uh, distributed. I've always been interested in distributed computing. So I'm kind of coming at it more from a, a technical angle. And um, I like the idea of a, a wallet that you can log into all your websites with it's an identity it's a it's a way of authenticating yourself without exposing everything to google or microsoft or amazon you have kind of a pseudo anonymous identity and it's yours it's locked in your wallet and you can get into all kinds of different websites with it so the single sign on idea i really enjoy that and then i really i really like the concept of a, a smart contract from a just the ability to make something really unique um, that combines art, finance, computers, networking, social, uh, social interactions, communities. It, it kind of wraps up everything kind of in one package um, as a new sort of digital platform, global digital platform that, that really opens communication between people from all countries. Um, just being in the Web3 space, I've seen this cooperation between lots of people who disagree politically and ideologically, but somehow they're all working together to, to build a something that benefits uh, the public in general. So a lot of it's about the, the ability to interact with, with uh, new people and explore other ways of... Uh, of governing in a in a world economy where you can uh, you can do a, a, a little bit more self governance, although it has been hard with all the uh, how to control the the scams that happen and some of the the stuff that isn't as nice. The technology enables good things and bad things. I just hope we can get enough people that that want to pursue the the things that help the public and help society. What do you think personally about like? how maybe AI arts and the met the concept of the metaverse can change the art world. I think AI is gonna it's gonna be a huge part of even physical physical art and digital art. I've seen this done by I've done this myself and other people have done it. They've created something with AI and then been inspired by it. So they they painted a painting based on that art. But I see it accelerating creativity even among people who have never been able to be creative because they don't they're not in that community or they don't have the training or the skills to do it for example this this system by holly herndon and matt dryers called holly plus she she's trained an ai model on her voice her singing voice and in real time live someone else can sing into a microphone and it comes out as her voice uh, and just the ability to to take on the identity of other people and explore the perspective of another person through what they've made or through their voice or through their art. It's it's an interesting exploration that I just think is going to be happening more, that people will take models of other people's voices or songs or art and remix them into new things, new things that we've never seen before. And the metaverse, I kind of think we're already at a sort of metaverse now with Web3. It's not all seamless, but 
we Zoom, we, we do video conferences with each other. We're kind of already in a virtual space uh, a lot of the time of the day interacting with people online. I'm not sure that VR goggles are going to catch on until they get a lot smaller. If that's what people think of as the metaverse is some kind of 3D virtual world, I think it it might stay in this two it, kind of this 2D state for a longer period of time. I guess time would tell, but it, it's really nice to hear your perspective. And I'm also wondering, um, what do you think about collector or curator DAOs and um, like how, what do you, how do you think you're going to change the future of the art world? I'm not really sure. I haven't been too involved with any DAOs. They haven't approached me. Um, I am involved with curation groups like uh, mm-hmm. Mokta, uh, Museum of, of uh, Contemporary and Digital Art, and CADAF, um, C-A-D-A-F. Um, these are groups that uh, somewhat existed before nfts existed and they're just starting to to do more curation um i've heard of flamingo dow and a few others uh, but i haven't had uh, really inter- any interaction with them at all those are like the new kind of like hot topics or hot topic after nfts and so um, not so many people are familiar with it but it's growing and it's it's sort of like catching on um, but yeah, thank you. I think this has been quite an interesting, you know, insightful conversation. And it's been really great uh, hearing your perspective, your background, your story, and how far you've come. And we just love the diversity in Web3. And we, again, thank you so much for taking the time to, you know, to chat with Joanne and myself. And I'm wondering where our listeners can find you on your social media platforms to check out your work uh-huh. and the stuff you're working on. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm on, uh, my handle is Bard Ionson, and it's on uh, Twitter and Instagram. It's the same name. Uh, website is bardionson.com. Um, you can search me on any search engine with Bard Ions and you should find lots of lots of uh, links. Amazing. Thank you so much, Bart, for being part of today's forum. I think it's going to be very nice. We also had Kadaf on the other day. So I oh, think, great. yeah, I think it's just great for artists to get these episodes about how they can really get ahead in the Web3 space. And thank you to everyone who tuned in today with us on today's forum. And if you also want to get more involved within our community, make sure to follow us on IG and Twitter. We are newform underscore NCO and also newcoin. And our website is newcoin.org. And we, yeah, subscribe and like and stay tuned for the next episode of New Forum. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Great to see you.